my story my testimony my testimony aka jehova aka aka ya apostle because you're here you just help us understand what the, uh, the gabriel mr gabriel is singing here aka jehova actually um that song is an is an igbo song yes an igbo song um one of the the dominated tribe in nigeria mm-hmm. and the word aka akaya means the mighty hand of god okay we do it wow mkono mkuu wa bwana utafanya utatenda the mighty uh, the mighty hand of god, of god will, yeah, do it. will do it Wow, amen, amen. amen. And and people are just blessed with it even without hearing yes, the words. Yes, that understand uh, what the song is actually saying. Wow. <laughs> I must say that Nigerians has great uh way of worshiping God. Amen. They just sing it in their language, but That's we get true. to understand because we, I think because we are bantu then. That. That's true. Okay. Skizaje, someone is saying I say hi to you here. Some people are greeting you here. Okay. Uh there's a person here called Uh, kijana mdogo kijana mdogo is a small boy oh, uh, he's saying say hi to apostle moses yeah, thank he, uh, you. he's loving the show thank, thank you. you very much uh there's someone called uh, fundi 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 is a uh, <laughs> i don't know if to say what fundi did daddy an engineer like uh, uh someone working somewhere okay. uh from cyprus some place called cyprus uh some people from uh indebis are listening indebis is uh, just close here okay. uh from kapkoi also an an area around here okay. uh in man of god i want us i want you to take us to another level to another side of you that is called my story my testimony skizaji tuinge katika ushuhuda my story my testimony my testimony all right apostle yes. we get into another side of you now okay. just before you are called apostle yes <laughs> so that people may not think that this person is talking to us about problems that we might be having as africans <laughs> as people yes. uh, and he might have been thrown from heaven <laughs> no, not Just take us back. Where do you not come from? Where you come from the environment and and before you became an apostle, where are you? Yes. Thank you so much for the privilege to share my story and my testimony. Mm-hmm. Uh the mom Moses Azetu um came from a family of um late Mr. Azetu mm-hmm. um from a tribe in Nigeria we call it Jukun. Mm-hmm. Jukun um covered um precisely like two states we are majority of us are in in, in Taraba state mm-hmm. and part of us uh in Benue state you know well, my father is from Taraba state in the northern part of Nigeria while my mom mm-hmm. is in, from Nasrawa state from the um uh, north central of uh, Nigeria. The man Moses Azetu uh, not actually a son from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I uh, I had an encounter with God years ago when I gave my life to Christ sometime in 1995. Mm-hmm. I remember um, one of this Sunday myself and one of my friends were actually going to the river bank. We call it River Benue mm-hmm. in Benue state to mm-hmm. go and uh, a shower and wash our, our clothes and then normally every 3 pm we go to a place they call Swangi Cinema mm-hmm. where we go to go and watch Indian films i don't know whether you watch mm-hmm. Indian films here yeah so and uh, while we were going to the river that day there was this church that they just opened not off to like uh, three months the church is by the bank of the river they are using an uncompleted building mm-hmm. the church uh, the building they are using does not even have windows doesn't have doors so they are worshiping there And uh, the pastor in charge there is Reverend Edward Williams Chanomi. Mm-hmm. He's a bishop now by the grace of God. Amen. And as a then I was uh, working with my friend we we're going to the river so I saw him preaching. And then uh, you know because of this uh, heart of stubbornness uh, like uh, teenagers mm-hmm. I took his stone. Mm-hmm. I had wanted to stone him 
why he was preaching from outside wow. he was preaching inside but he never knows what i was trying to do he didn't even know but mm -hmm. i took a stone and my friends taught me that i should stop that mm -hmm. that's the man of god mm -hmm. you know and i had to listen to my friend so i threw away the stone and then we went to the river and baited wash our clothes eventually we went to the swan thing man mm -hmm. so the next sunday i went to the river very early in the morning you know, to wash my clothes. Then I met with one of my Jukum brother, mm -hmm. you know, who happened to be a member of that church. So he and I invited me that uh, he wants me, he wants to invite me to a church. Mm -hmm. I said, which church? He said, this church that they open. If, <laughs> and I said, in my mind, I said, is it not the same church that I had wanted to stone the pastor last Sunday? Oh. And you are inviting me? So he insisted. I said, okay, I don't have clothes. Mm -hmm. You can see I came to wash my clothes. He said, okay. That he can wait for me for my clothes to dry because it was during hammer time where when you dry, you wash clothes and dry under 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. the thing dried up. So eventually I washed my clothes and the thing dried. So he was, he said, I told him he should, should go ahead that I will meet him in church. Mm -hmm. So I got home, dropped my bucket and then I was even wearing a bathroom slippers mm -hmm. because I didn't even have a shoe then, you know. Mm -hmm. So I walked into the church and I sat down the back. The church, they were not more than 20. Mm -hmm. This an uh, upcoming church. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I sat down, I was not privileged to listen to the man of God preach. He has almost rounded up his sermon before I came. So as soon as I sat down, he made an altar call. He said, if you are here, you know you are living the life that is not of God and you want to give your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. I want you to come out and receive Jesus. I don't know how I stood up on my own. A force moved me out. Mm -hmm. And I came out in company of some other few people. I think about four to five of us that mm -hmm. we give our life to Christ. And when we give our life to Christ, he told us the, the next uh, service day is on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And that all of us should be there that he wants to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit on us. And eventually I came that Tuesday and he prayed and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Wow. And from that day, Till now, mm -hmm. it has been an encounter I can never forget. Wow! So I was serving under him. I had a lot of friends then. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, I was a teenage verger, but I have some big guys who are like uh, my godfathers. I followed them about. Mm -hmm. They always sent me to go and call their girlfriends for them. You know, I also they will also help me to approach a girl for me mm -hmm. those days. You know, like that. And then eventually when I gave my life to Christ, I withdrew from them. So they put pressure on me to return back to their group. <laughs> they wow. did everything possible within their capacity. But I told them, no, I've encountered something. Mm -hmm. It is called a great light. I've encountered Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. before then, I've been attending our traditional church. We call it Ekan Church. Mm -hmm. You know, even though the word of God is being preached there, but you know, you, you go to church, but you know, it's you, kind still, of you are, you are still comfortable thing. with your sin. Just you are thing. still comfortable with your lifestyle mm -hmm. or all those traditional churches. So when I came out, the leadership of our traditional church, mm -hmm. because we are about four of the Jukum boys mm -hmm. who give our life to Christ in this new church. Mm -hmm. So they were angry. Our parents reported us to the, the pastor of the traditional church. Wow. So they summoned on us and asked us to leave that church. That that's the church where they drink blood. We should return back to our traditional church. Even if we want uh, them to... Um, uh, fix a, 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 an English session for us because then they don't speak English there. Mm -hmm. They preach in houses. So okay. it's okay if it is because of us they can introduce English session. So they introduce English session and ask us to come back that we should come and handle it. I say, when did I give my life to Christ I will come and handle <laughs> uh, a service as a pastor. I have to grow. Mm -hmm. So eventually my other three Jukum brothers they backslid They went to join the traditional church. I was the only one that refused. Mm -hmm. And because of that I was hated. Oh. Because of that, I I was looked down upon. I was looked as though I'm an outcast. Mm -hmm. People don't want to associate with me. They insult my mother. They insult my father. And because of the pressure, my mother hated me. My mm -hmm. father hated me. Sometimes I would lock myself in the room and be praying the Holy Spirit for one hour, two hours. My mom would come and pour water on me. I, my mom persecuted me. My father persecuted me. Eventually, in 1998, I lost my father. Oh. You know, my father died, but my mom is still alive until today. Mm -hmm. um, the great story is that today, my mom, when she looked at me, she regret why she persecuted me in the past. Whoa. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, like that. So I kept moving, and uh, eventually, the man of God, whom I got saved in his hand, 
uh, relocated from Makodi to Abuja, mm -hmm. you know, and then he handed me over to another pastor to nurture me up. They call it Reverend uh, Randolph with the Assemblies of God. And he nurtured me after a while. And then I moved into another church. You call it Living Word uh, Christian Center, Pastor uh, Reverend David Sapele, you know, who also, because I, uh, uh, I have nobody to train me in school, mm -hmm. he, 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 and he saw that I, I has given my life, my life to Christ, I'm ready to serve God. He volunteered to sponsor me in school, cool. through the secondary school then, mm -hmm. you know. And um, gradually, gradually, from there, uh, there's this youth fellowship I normally attend. Mm -hmm. We call it Flames of Fire, mm -hmm. you know. So we had one program one day. Then we invited one man of God called Reverend Edward Kings, mm -hmm. and he came and preached with fire. I've never seen that kind of fire. Mm -hmm. He was preaching; people were falling down under power. Mm -hmm. And then God said to me at that tender stage, "That this is your pastor. Follow him; he will make you." So that is how I left the other church. You know, I left it not because there was a crisis. No, I left it because you, God instructed God instructed me you to follow this pastor. So I followed that pastor. And that was the pastor that began to train me in ministry. Okay. Just, just, just before we go uh, to, to how you began your ministry and yes. how you entered into ministry, you talked about being persecuted while yes. you're, being, you're born again. Yes. And I, I know many Christians have encountered that. When you declare that you're born again, mm -hmm. when you say you accept Christ, yes. and all of a sudden you find that things are becoming more worse than Very they used to be. As at that time, I faced a lot of persecution. Mm -hmm. I, I, as I'm telling you, I... As soon as I gave my life to Christ, I don't know, my clothes started warning out. Some of them would just turn on their own. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I was left with one safari shirt and one velvet trouser. Mm -hmm. And I used that trouser and that safari shirt for like almost six months. Wow. But I've never missed church one day. I've never missed church one day. Sometimes my mother would deny me of food because she wants me to return back. To the traditional church pastor just to ask you yes. what really kept you moving when when you're passing all through these challenges when the when, when when the, when the, uh, the persecution and mm. you, you're just born again yes and you feel like now things are becoming worse than they used to be i don't i don't just really know but for me i believe it's the encounter i had this witness that i have found a great light mm -hmm. the true, the true uh, uh, light i have this inner witness that this is the best Route to follow. You mean salvation is so personal? The best. It's, it was a personal. I, I told people, I said that Jesus died for the whole world. Mm -hmm. It's a historical reality. But that Jesus died for me is a personal experience. Wow. Until you take salvation as a personal experience, mm -hmm. you will pass light. Mm -hmm. Until you take salvation, because Christianity itself is not easy. You will go through a lot of things. You go through rejections, except you are not ready to serve God in truth and in spirit. As long oh. as you are ready to serve God in truth and spirit, there are 1,001 things that will come up to mm -hmm. discourage you. Mm -hmm. But if you have a pers if you see salvation as a personal experience, you can't give up for anything. Mm -hmm. You can't give up. You can't sacrifice heaven for anything. Wow. Yes. Uh, Pastor, I will take a break with this song, Tasha Cobb's Breaking Every Chain. Then we, when we come back, we'll be talking about your ministry, okay. how you get to enter into ministry, oh, how right. you mentored. You talked about mentorship, and yes. you will give us uh, the importance of mentorship uh, and mentoring a minister. Mm. Is, you know, many people have been in church, they have been preached to, then after a while, they just live like I was a present worship, mm. praising, uh, doing worship in church. All of a sudden, I feel like I can open a church. And I just go out like we're talking about that, uh, Pastor, in a short while. Yeah, right. My story, my testimony. You know, kutoka kwa ke Apostle Moses Azetu. Ana zungumza kusena bim vitu mbavo na joko mba hata na wewe umeweza kuviona. Na kama pia unahushuhuda, na kama unaswali, unaitaji uombewe, unaitaji ingie katika huduma. Kama yeye, sufuri saba, sufuri moja, sita, ene moja, sufuri saba, tisa. Mimi ni tuwa Anthony Elam, ni konae mgeni hapa na leo, tunazungumza kimombo kwa wingi sana. Kwa hivyo utaweza tu kushika, kwenda na pamoja nasi lakini tajaribu sana kuhakikisha kwamba unaelewa kile ambacho kinaendelea hapo this power in the name of jesus to break every chain Ah, 
hear you can hear the chain breaking na wakati ambapo mtumishi Mungu alikuwa anaongea hapa mimi ni niliona tu nyororo zikivunjika mahali na kama ni wewe ambaye nyororo ilikatika ukahisi kama imekatika basi na kupa nafasi ya kusema hapa nasi uh, ndani ya mitume radio 89.7 FM dakika ni 22 zasalia kutimu saa 12 timia hapo saa 12 naingia katika awamu nyingine lakini kwa hivi sasa niko naye mtumishi Mungu uh, mtume uh, mtume 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 za apostle pastor <laughs> okay <laughs> apostle we call mtume wow now mitume uh, mitume is apostles wow yeah now the name mitume radio wow. is uh, as the apostles, apostles radio, radio. Wow. Now you're in the right place Amen. today. <laughs> okay. Ah uh, niko na mtume hapa uh, Moses Azetu kutoka Nigeria na jinsi amekueleza historia ya unaendelea kubarikiwa tu na tubaye ukielewa zaidi na kuna mtu hapa amesema kwamba wonderful message I have been totally blessed that message is mine someone called pk he is saying Amen. that message was his Amen. he's gotten something Amen. and i know many people are being blessed and i know we'll receive more smss on that Amen. but pastor we we want to go to another session where you you take us through how you began your your ministry yes. how you began your ministry and, and just like i was telling you off mic uh, that uh, so many churches been opened around the country mm. and sometimes we tend to think that we have so many churches in our country we have so many believers in our country uh, only to realize in my research i can say in my research i realize that people move from this church to this church. church and uh, many of the ministers around you see a minister moving from this church like his Uh, a present worship in this church mm. then uh, he says god had has Call called him. me to <laughs> open a church he opens a church he moves with all the present worship <laughs> oh. talk to us about how you entered into ministry and how was your encounter okay like i began by saying that um, when i was serving the, um, that reverend mm-hmm. reverend edward chanomi yes um i served with him for for quite numbers of years mm-hmm. I was sleeping in church as a church boy slept in the, on a bench for about four years mm-hmm. and like I said one of these day on the 20th of July 1998 I can't forget that day it was in the afternoon I was actually having a personal prayer in the church mm-hmm. and um I prayed and prayed and the prayer took into another level the power of God took me and hit me on the ground I was rolling al- alone it was then I heard the voice of God t- telling me I have called you into ministry mm-hmm. but even when i received the call i wrote what god told me down mm-hmm. but i didn't enter into ministry immediately i was still a brother i still remain on that reverend edward channel myself i still serve him for extra two years mm-hmm. you know or three years there about because i think he released me uh the year 2001 mm-hmm. you see so i i had a call of god 1998 under him and then i was released by him the uh 2001 mm-hmm. to go and walk with the man whom through which i was converted who is also called uh, reverend edward chanomi mm-hmm. because then he relocated to abuja so he solicited for me to move down and served under him in abuja so and um eventually he wrote a letter to the pastor i was with mm-hmm. in makodi you know and the pastor said okay i will release you he requested, he that, requested that, you, you, that you go over there yes. and, and talking about calling uh many people have been talking about calling have heard about calling what is this way calling we, 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 we say calling what you is know, this way saying that calling is a calling? different form mm-hmm. there are people who have possible a direct encounter mm mm-hmm. They can hear God's voice audibly, direct, saying to them, "Son, arise! Mm-hmm. I have called you as a pastor, mm-hmm. or I have called you as an apostle, or I have called you as a prophet." There are those who don't hear the voice of God, but they have an inner witness within them that this is what God wants them to do. Mm-hmm. Just like you now I believe what you are doing now you had an inner witness within you mm-hmm. that's why you are doing what you are doing True. even though you would have been somewhere True. doing another thing mm-hmm. and hence, so we call it the still small voice the inner voice mm-hmm. something telling you within you this is what God wants me to do mm-hmm. that is different from ambition ambition is i want i desire to be this 
But vision is something that comes from within. Something that comes from within. Mm -hmm. Either you have a direct encounter from God, you know, through a dream, mm -hmm. through dreams, through maybe God sending another prophet to tell you God is calling you into ministry. Mm -hmm. And then even with that, God will have to confirm it by also uh, uh, letting you know practically that he's calling you. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so that is it. Wow. That is it. But I discovered that in our generation, a lot of people enter into ministry by ambitions. Mm -hmm. It's not vision. Mm -hmm. Some people enter ministry because they have no job. <laughs> Because they have no job, so they felt the church is one of the 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 the, the cheap things you can do to mm -hmm. get money. Mm -hmm. So they get into ministry, you know. So you you know, if you have the spirit of God, you will actually know mm -hmm. those who are genuinely called and those who are not genuinely called. Wow, mm -hmm. and I think that is the issue we, we the problem we are having in this generation yes uh differentiating between the people who have been called real by god mm. and uh, those one who are just ambitious to yes, yes. getting into ministry it's actually ambition that will make somebody you see somebody who just stand up mm -hmm. and leave a church and go and open his church nearby that is an ambition, ambition. so because if, if somebody god just stand calls up. you he will send it to your new ground let me tell you my story let me try to complete my story mm -hmm. when i was released by edward kings to edward chanomi mm -hmm. i went to serve under him as a resident pastor when i was with him i served with him for about two years and god spoke to me i should go to bible school because then i've not gone to bible school but i was ordained as a pastor mm. i was a pastor without going to bible school Whoa. so god spoke to me i should go to bible school so i approached him and he refused but mm -hmm. i'm going nowhere mm -hmm. and because he refused i was not in haste i'm a servant so i obey him so he traveled to lagos one day he was returning back and mm -hmm. god spoke to him mm -hmm. and tell him release my son to bible school so when he came back, he now called me and said, God has spoke to him that he should release me to Bible school. I should go to this Bible school and be trained. And I went to Idahosa Bible School. I don't know whether you have heard of Archbishop Benson, Idahosa, mm -hmm. the Lion of Africa. Wow. That's a great man of God that God have raised in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. A lot of Kenyans came to his Bible school. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a lot of friends in Kenya who we knew in Nigeria because we attended the same Bible school. Okay. I have Apostle Mark, you know, mm -hmm. I have uh, uh, Apostle Moses Ngumi, mm -hmm. and even Uganda have some friends there, mm -hmm. you know. So, that is how, I, when I went to Bible school, when I was in Bible school, God started speaking to me about my ministry. In mm -hmm. fact, when I was still serving with the man of God, my bishop in Abuja, God gave me the name of my ministry. The People of Grace International Ministry, God gave me the name. But God never asked me to start and I was not aware when I'm going to start or where I'm going to start. Mm -hmm. It was when I was in Bible school, God said to me, I'm sending you after Bible school to Taraba State, your father's state, to go and begin me an apostolic work. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, before now, I had a pressure. I had pressure from Abuja, the former church where I was. Mm -hmm. People, uh, you know, th those who want me to return back, mm -hmm. maybe after Bible school to come and start a church mm -hmm. in Abuja so that they can become a member. But I said no. And even when I was in, in Benin schooling, I, I was still serving with another uh, reverend, Reverend Daniel Nono, and I had opportunity to start a church in Benin. In fact, good numbers of his people, you know, I was young that time, preach with vibrancy, all those <laughs> young guys, young girls mm -hmm. will like you. Mm -hmm. So they are always ready to stand by you, to support you. But that is where, not where God asked me to stand. God told me I should go to Taraba State. And interestingly, it's mm -hmm. my home state, it's my state, but I didn't grow up there. I didn't even know people there. I grew up in Benue State. So when I went to Taraba State, I didn't even have a house to sleep. It Whoa. was one of my Bible school students who were in school that gave me his own house address because he was from Taraba State. So I squatted in their house, you know, mm -hmm. for like two to three days before I met with a friend, a pastor friend who I knew in Abuja. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, he stays in that city, Ukari. So how did I start my ministry? I carried my briefcase and I was going up and down evangelism. Mm -hmm. God spoke to me, go to a place called Shagari Quarters. There's a quarters, they call Shagari Quarters. Mm -hmm. I should go there. When I got there, I said, Lord, why did you ask me to come here? He said, I should ask for somebody who is sick and pray for. Mm -hmm. So I went to one house. I said, is there anybody sick here? They say no. I went to another house. Is there anybody sick here? They say no. Until I got about the fourth house, then I saw a lady came out. Mm -hmm. I asked her, please, do you have anybody who is sick in this quarter? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. She asked me, what do you, why are you looking for the sick? Are you a doctor? I said, no. I said, I'm a pastor. He said, you want to pray for the sick? I said, yes. And she took me to her cousin brother mm -hmm. who has been on a sick bed for three days. He has not stood up. He worked with the INEC mm -hmm. office mm -hmm. in Nigeria. That's uh, um, Nigerian Electoral uh, Commission, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I got there. And when I saw him in a sick bed, it was a one room that he was living in. Mm -hmm. So I opened the Bible mm -hmm. and preached for him. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Simple gospel. When I finished preaching, I prayed. And when I prayed, this man that could not stand up for three days, the power of God came upon him. He stood up on his feet. He started sweating. He told his sister, what happened? Now, what kind of power is this? Mm -hmm. And then, he took an offering, 500 naira then, and mm -hmm. gave it to me. I told him, no. Keep your money to yourself. I will come back tomorrow and pray with you. Still, he said, thank you, sir. I left. The next day, do you know when I finished praying for him, mm -hmm. I trekked back mm -hmm. from where I went to pray to where I was squatting. was like one hour trek, but I trekked. I refused to collect his money that he gave me and I trekked. Mm -hmm. The next day, I trekked to that place and prayed for him. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, before I came back, I met eight people waiting for me for prayer. Mm -hmm. He has already gone around the quarters and advertise me that he can that <laughs> look at this man of God that just came and pray for him. Wow. And the eight people were with him. That day I prayed for a woman that has ulcer. They call her Mama Mary. Till today mm -hmm. we still communicate. I prayed for her. She has ulcer. And I prayed for her instantly. God healed her. Wow. She was healed. The next day she started eating pepper. She couldn't feed it. So, and I told them, okay, the third day I won't be able to come. I will come the fourth day. The fourth day when I arrived, I met 21 people. Whoa. waiting for me mm -hmm. so it was from that 21 people after i finished prayer for them and did counseling few of the people came to me and asked me sir we want to know where your church is we want to volunteer to become your members <laughs> so i told them no wow. i have not started church but i came to this town to start a church but i've not started the, the guy who was healed said can we use my room to start the church uh -huh. That he wants to offer his room for us to start. I say no problem. Mm -hmm. So we started from one room. On Sunday, we will squeeze ourselves over 40 something people in one room. Whoa. And I will preach to them. I have the pictures. And the church began there. That is how the church started. And Pastor, right now, as I was passing through your profile, your, your Facebook yes. account, yes. I can see you with great men of God mm. ministering, different different churches, mm. different uh, different gatherings. And God has really worked for you, Amen. has really done a lot for you. Amen. And in and he has given you a favor even to come here in this county, Amen. in this town, yes, and minister to different churches. Yes, and, uh, and, and, and Pastor, I would like you to help someone here. He's been in the ministry for many years. Mm. Uh, just to help them understand the difference between uh, you being called for ministry and that gift that works for you, works in, in you. Uh, you. I have seen you preach and I have seen you prophesy. Mm. Uh, and, and and this really has really uh, had to confuse so many people. People don't know uh, who is a prophet, who is an apostle, who is a pastor, who is an evangelist. Yes. You talked about you going somewhere evangelizing. And at the end of the day, God worked wonders there. Yes. And after that, a church was born. Yes. Talk to us about the gifts uh, that works in God's ministers. Amen. Mm -hmm. wow, it's a privilege. Um, like I said... I prophesy, but I'm not a prophet. Mm -hmm. I have never claimed to be a prophet. God only helped me and gave me the little of that giftings to see and to hear mm -hmm. just for the purpose of delivering people. I, when I started, I started as a pastor because the calling of God sometimes is progressional. Mm -hmm. I started as a pastor. The ministry of a pastor is different from the ministry of an apostle. The pastor is a shepherd of the church. Mm -hmm. So when I started, God didn't give me a motion ministry. Mm -hmm. Because the ministry of an apostle is a motion ministry. It's a ministry that travels from here and there. You mm -hmm. see that? Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the ministerial giftings, I started seeing them at work. Mm -hmm. Number one, possibly because 
I know it's a gift from God. And secondly, um, the people I served. Mm -hmm. The man of God that get, got me born again is a man that was blessed with a healing anointing. I have seen him raise three dead bodies. I have seen people who died, literally, prayed for them. They came back to life. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. So, I believe when a man has a gift and you serve the man over the years, there's always an impartation. Okay. Yes, there's always an impartation. So, the healing anointing, I believe, came on me because I served him. Mm -hmm. And so, when I started my own ministry, I started what I saw him doing. I started practicing it. And I began to see it, you know, gradually happening mm -hmm. with prayer, with study. I didn't begin in the prophetic. The prophetic, I stumbled into the prophetic uh, precisely um, 2004. When I had an encounter with a great man of God. You should know him, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, mm -hmm. from the Omega Fire Ministry. I mm -hmm. think they should have a branch in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I had an encounter with him in Benin. Then I was still in school. I attended a meeting when I saw him prophesying. What? Calling people's name, calling phone number. Then GSM was just new. Ha! I said, "What kind of uh, gift is this?" So I, I admired the gift. You admired the gift. So I bought his books. Mm -hmm. I bought his tapes. Yes. And then I started listening to them. I started listening to them. I started praying, desiring the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I will go for meeting. I will call cases. It will be wrong. I said, okay, there's somebody here. I won't see anybody. I said, there's somebody, you are having so-and-so -so pain. Nobody will come out. But it was like a training moment mm -hmm. it's like doing trial and error just like when you are trying to do handwriting you know mm -hmm. you are learning apprentice you know so the ministry also there are times you you grow into some things the mm -hmm. gifting of god you grow into it you don't just stand up overnight and begin to prophesy you have a question mark mm -hmm. anybody who's just stand up overnight and stumble into the prophetic or the apostolic ministry has a question mark. You must go through a process. First of all, they will check who and who has mentored you. Okay. Who and who have you followed? Mm -hmm. Who have you sat under? Who have you drank from? That's the way to judge. You know, mm -hmm. there are people who claim that they have been born as prophet from their mother's womb. Well, <laughs> I don't know, you know. <laughs> but I know that the giftings of God, you grow into it. Yes. So when I started drinking and drinking and I started loving the man, Mm -hmm. And as every time I have an opportunity to meet him, I plant seed into his life. I sow seed into their ministry. Mm -hmm. And then gradually, gradually, I began to see the manifestation little by little mm -hmm. and little by little. And then begin to associate with other friends also that operate in the same gift, mm -hmm. you know, and then begin to see the manifestation little by little. Amen. Uskirizaji, mm. ndiyo story hiyo. My story, my testimony. Unaona hile meujiza mungu wanafanya hapa. My story, my testimony. My testimony.